The showdown over Russian energy supplies has worsened. Finland says Russia will stop supplying the country with natural gas from tomorrow because it refuses to pay in Russian rubles. It says it was prepared for this after Russia objected to Finland's move to join the NATO Security Alliance. Let's get more now from Laura Bacon issue, which is in London. Uh, Russia, Laura, has already cut off electricity supplies to Finland and now gas, as it's done in Poland, in Bulgaria. Uh, what's the impact of these moves on both the EU and also Russia? Well, yeah, as you've said, this had been maybe expected by the Finnish government, of course, in retaliation for their decision to subject uh, to, to, to basically move towards joining the NATO alliance. Once that announcement was made, that that intention was there, Russia retaliating by basically threatening them with uh, jeopardizing their energy security. Now, Finland says consistently that it has been prepared for this, that actually it's been investing millions of euros into trying to make itself less reliant on Russia for its, its energy supplies. And the prime minister has said that rather than it taking years to move away from Russian sources, it should actually take the country maybe weeks or just months. Now, that, of course, will be some source of uh, comfort for those people living in Finland. But it is still a concern. One of the Finnish state energy companies has said that it's been made aware that these gas supplies could be cut off today or tomorrow. It says it does have access to some supplies for its customers, but they, of course, will be limited. And so many people now will be looking at that infrastructure uh, situation and also the supplies that are available to ensure that the country can continue as it does in everyday life. We've seen from other nations around the European Union, of course, that this decision to cut off those supplies can be quite jarring. It does impact on the economies of those nations because, of course, they have to be careful about those resources. Reducing the amount that is available makes energy more expensive as well. Of course, it's the sort of economics of these decisions. But the EU overall believes that reducing a reliance on Russia for that energy will be of overall benefit, uh, a net positive, if you like, if it does strangle the economy of Russia, reducing those payments that go to that country and to the Kremlin so that they can no longer push that money towards its invasion of Ukraine. And G7 leaders have unveiled more financial help for Ukraine, $20 billion worth of help. Uh, can we drill down to the details? Yeah, absolutely. This is a huge package that has been announced by G7 ministers. This is a meeting that's taken place in Germany between finance ministers there and other members of various uh, European banks. They've decided to put together this support package, basically offering up not only money, but also loans to the Ukrainian government because Kyiv is struggling in terms of trying to make sure its economy continues to run and, of course, being able to invest in its decisions to defend the nation against this invasion made by Russia. We understand that there is a real need for investment in infrastructure in the country, trying to rebuild not only uh, those buildings that have been targeted in attacks, but, of course, the road routes. Uh, and in areas like Lviv, that is underway. Governors there um, and the mayor of that city really pushing forward with a plan to try to get uh, the rebuilding plan in progress and developments are being made. But there are plenty of places across Ukraine that still need major investment. Not just that, of course, there is the immediate humanitarian aid as well that needs to be offered up. People are still fleeing the country, some returning, though, to try to get to family members that have been left behind. And there are many uh, people that are still sheltering in underground uh, bunkers, in basements, because they are frightened about the attacks that are underway. And so offering humanitarian support, aid, shelters as well to ensure that they have access to sanitary uh, equipment and uh, infrastructure there is of vital importance as well as other humanitarian aid. So this money is going to go a long way in keeping that country moving. And the G7 leaders uh, and those nations say that there will be more money available should Ukraine need it. All right, thank you for that, Laura Macon Isherwood in London.